my OS 5 inch gauge Stevenson's rocket and this is part 6 and it's called the engine has a tender behind but before that I'd just like to issue a really serious health and safety warning if you've been watching this series you will notice that I've been running this engine for a considerable length of time on the bench the engine generates a considerable oil mist so I put a piece of rag down the chimney to catch this so I don't breathe it in and the oil mist on this engine is so excessive it drips out of the bottom because the lubricator is over lubricating. In the next episode I'll show you the fix for this. In this clip I'm cleaning up the tyres on the front wheels using a piece of scotch Brite just to shine them up. And now, as in the title, the engine has a tender behind. This is the tender on its side and I'm applying some WD-40 to the water pump which refuses to move. I also took this opportunity to lubricate the wheels using some lubricating oil. I don't have the extension handle for the pump so I'm using a box key and no it doesn't move at all. The only answer is some ultraviolence. This is a piece of brass bar. I'm holding it well away from the woodwork and I'm tapping it very gently. And this seemed to work. After a while it loosened up and it's moving okay now. You must never try and free off a water pump by using the extension handle. That would put far too much strain on the linkages. I'm not really happy using an old box key as a handle, so I'm going to make one. First thing to do is to check the diameter of the shaft that sticks out of the hand pump. The shaft diameter is 6mm, so now I need to find a piece of stainless steel, and I've found a piece. Generally speaking, proper stainless steel is not magnetic. I thank all the viewers who wrote in and took the time to tell me all about stainless steel. And here it is in the chuck. What I would like to add is when you machine stainless steel, do not stop. Keep the tool cutting at all times, because if the tool rubs, then it work hardens, and then the tool won't cut anymore. I'm a bit concerned. My lathe is not working properly. There's something wrong with the three-phase system. I use a high-quality three-phase converter, and that's working okay. What it is, there's something wrong with the contactor in the centre of the cabinet. The boost light keeps coming on on the three-phase converter, but once I switch off the contactor and switch it back on a couple of times, it works okay. You keep hearing a thumping noise, that's the problem. And unfortunately, when you hear the thumping noise, there's a massive drop in power. This drop in power is bad enough when you're turning, but when you're drilling, it's even worse. On the outside of the piece of bar, which is now a tube, you can see in the middle there's a line. The power dropped momentarily and that's where the line occurred. So you really have to keep the tool moving, whether it's a drill or a lathe tool. Unfortunately now I have a major problem. The drill is blunt and trying to force a blunt drill through the work makes it a lot worse. Especially when the power keeps dropping. What I had to do was resharpen the drill, switch the contactor on and off several times and start again. Applying a constant steady pressure to the twist drill. You can see a couple of things from this clip. One is the twist drill is still getting very hot, but it's going into the work okay. And the piece of bar, which after all is a long way out from the chuck, is not 100% true. But this is not a problem, it isn't a high precision part. It's only a handle for a water pump. A very fine cut should get rid of the mark in the centre. Yes, I think it's more or less done that. So even though it's not a high precision part, I still want it to look good. I don't know what happened to the original that should have come with the engine, probably lost a long time ago. I'm finishing off the part with some wet or dry sandpaper. By turning both of the handles on the cross slide simultaneously, I managed to taper this part, just to make it look something rather than a parallel bar. This device in the tool post is called a knurling tool, and I'm using it to imprint a pattern on the metal to make the piece of bar easier to grip. All you do is put some positive pressure on the knurling tool against the work and engage the longitudinal auto feed and the tool does the rest. When you get to the end of the travel, stop the lathe and have a look at the quality of the knurl and if it's not deep enough, all you need to do is increase the pressure of the knurling tool on the work, then change the position of the reversing lever on the lathe so that the saddle goes the other way. That way the second pass will give you a deeper knurl. And now from an appearance point of view, I'm just turning part of the handle parallel to clean up the appearance of the knurl and make it look something. It's very important though, when you get to the part that's knurled, just back off the tool so you don't have a sharp edge. 
Auto Traverse is engaged so you just have to back off the handwheel on the cross slide. And depending on the speed at which you turn the handwheel on the cross slide, this will create a sharper or lesser angled taper. In a very similar manner, I've reversed the part in the chuck and I'm rounding the other end now. And here it is, a stainless steel handle for the hand pump. It fits perfectly and I think it looks okay. Better than just a straight piece of bar, I think. Time now to test the hand pump. I wonder if it will pump any water. It certainly does, because underneath this tender is quite a large hand pump, which makes a change. The engine doesn't have an injector, it has a crosshead pump, and they can be a bit unreliable. But with a hand pump this size, it's not a problem keeping the boiler topped up. So that's it, the job's progressing nicely. The next thing to tackle in the next episode is the oil pump. This literally empties in a few minutes, and all the oil runs out of the front of the engine all over the bench. And it also comes splashing out of the chimney all over the model. This is no good at all. In the next episode, I'm going to attempt to fix this. I have an idea, which I'm sure will work, and may be adaptable for lubricators on other engines. Cylinder lubrication is vital. In fact, it's so essential, and some engines, particularly ones with gunmetal cylinders, they will very quickly score internally if the oil supply is interrupted. On the other hand, you do need a sufficiently good oil supply to the cylinders. Not too much and not too little. I could change the mechanical lubricator entirely, but I don't want to do that because this OS locomotive is a collectible item. And my idea only adds a very small part inside the lubricator. But that's it for now, I'm not giving the game away. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.